Hello Fun Robotics Network. My name is Anthony here on Finalysis and today we're going to look at a playoff match from Hawaii where we set another world record and how these two teams are able to achieve over 90 artifacts in this two and a half minute match. So we're going to look at that and the strategies that go into this here on Finalysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Take on the decode season with AntiMark. FTC teams can discover great components such as AntiMark's 3-inch mechanic wheels, programmable servos, sensors that detect distance, color, orientation, and many more solutions for your team. Find this and more at AntiMark.com and count on AntiMark for the reliable service that teams expect. So on the Red Alliance, we have Team 6962 Pokebolts on the bottom right and 13088 Cyber Saints on the top right. And on the blue line, we have team 24056 Crusaders 3 on the bottom left and 20311 Voyagers on the top left. This match, we're going to primarily focus on the Red Alliance. So starting off in this match, obviously we have both alliances shooting into the zone. And we have this Red Alliance putting 6 in. And we see that they're able to do this in 3 seconds. And one of the strategies that they're able to make this as high of an auto as it is, is Pokeball just does this back and forth motion, making sure they can pick up all the artifacts. And we can see that uh, Cyber Seals, Cyber Saints, is going in and already clearing the ramp to make sure that they have enough space because they're going to need it with how much this auto is. And we can see that Pokeball's put up two with a three, which is really good. And we see that Cyber Saints hits all three of theirs. And Pokebolts does this back and forth motion again to get more. And we see that this auto seems like it's been coordinated because the fact that they're able to go up and Cyber Saints is able to clear the ramp and go right into Pokebolts' intake is really creative and really ingenious because it's able to help them make sure that they can maximize their cycles. Uh, it's very intuitive and very synced. Uh, that is what is going to win most matches because we need autos that are synced and Pokeball says this back and forth in map action again. Uh, only grabbing two this time uh, and missing both of those, but they end up grabbing the last one and making that. So we can see that at the end of the autonomous sequence, we have uh, 21 artifacts scored, uh, which is insane. It's one of the highest autos we've seen in the world at this point in time. And we can see that we have five of the pattern bonuses. So for them not actually trying to get a pattern and getting five of the nine, it's pretty impressive. So this is auto our autonomouses that are synced or something that's going to make sure that teams have that next advantage over anybody else because that's what's going to help teams get the most points because everybody can, most teams can hit a 12 artifact auto, right? And most can hit three from far. So making sure you can get above that 15 is going to be very essential and being able to do it well with your alliance partner. So going into this match, we can see that Cyber Saints immediately clears the ramp and places their intake to where they can immediately intake those artifacts. This is another strategy I see that is going to be very helpful later on in the season because it's going to help prevent a lot of the extra artifacts going into the opposing alliance's human player station, therefore limiting what is safe for the other alliance to get. And then we can see Pokebolts going over to their human player station and penalty baiting Crusaders 3 into being in the red alliance box at the same time as them. So very good strategies by Pokebolts. Uh, for how experienced they are and this is not their first time in this situation and making it to world so we can see obviously that level of gameplay so one of the things i want to talk about is throughout this match we'll see that cyber saints plays close and pokeballs plays far this isn't an issue except for the fact that we can see that when pokeball shoots 
they whenever they shoot far they put so much spin on the artifacts that sometimes we can see that the artifacts actually bounce out because they're spinning so fast and they actually miss quite a few over the span of the entire match and we can see that throughout but most of the time they'll hit them but there'll be some times where they will just bounce right in and out and so we can see cyber saints clearing up that ramp again so we can see this adaptability right here so pokebolts was going into the human player station or the other alliances human player station to get artifacts they saw crusaders 3 coming in and so they immediately flipped and went to their other side uh that sort of adaptability from the drivers is very amazing and i'm extremely impressed with because being able to see that and flip on the fly is something that uh, not many people have and it's something that really sets Pokeballs apart from other teams. Uh, we can see that unfortunately uh, uh, Cyber Saints got a penalty because they were in the other tunnel at the time but we can see they go they just keep going and going and clear that tunnel so Pokeballs and their adaptability with how fast that robot is and how they can just get in and get in there and grab those really quickly is really nice with how big their intake is and so we can see yeah Pokeballs going back, and so does Crusaders 3. So Pokeballs only grabs two from that area and then goes over to their human player station to get the rest. So, and then we can see that Cyber Saints clears up the tunnel and nobody's in the blue alliance station. So Pokeballs goes in and does what they want to to make sure that they can get those three. So overall, just continuing, we can see that there's a lot of cycling. A lot of teams are just kind of doing their own thing, uh, staying out of each other's ways, hitting those three. Cyber Saints clearing up the tunnel again, and um, they're just, we're all just kind of going, right? And if we skip forward a little bit, we can see that Pokeballs is still cycling from far because that's what they do best. And we can see that with how much they've done uh, between Pokeballs and Cyber Saints, they clear it yet again. And we can see already that they've put up 56. Uh, as of when this updated with a minute left and the other line says like put up 33 which is still very respectable this are uh, it's still very high in terms of what I've seen so overall this match has been really good we can actually see funny enough the the back base is off the ground a little bit on the red alliance side just because of how hard cyber Saints has been hitting the ramp and the gate but it still doesn't really prevent them from scoring they're still scoring really nicely so we can see uh, this penalty pin right here uh, that they make, uh, Cyber Saints makes the Crusaders push open the gate a little bit and Cyber Saints gets the penalty for that. But overall, I mean, it really hasn't impacted much. So yeah, we're seeing Cyber Saints and they're still respectively putting up all the numbers and they're artifacts so one of the things that pokeballs is also that has that's going for them is the fact that because they're shooting three so fast if there's one that bounces out they actually collide with each other and then that makes them all three go in but if they end up shooting them in somewhat of a slower pace sometimes they miss so it just depends on how fast that they're shooting but like yeah so one just rolled out but they're they're all going around and scoring so we can see this for the for these next little bit of the match so going into the last 10 seconds this time is vital so we can see that they're at 83 and so they're going up and scoring so they end up filling the ramp and just overflowing so we are at five seconds left and cyber saints is partially parked and pokeballs is still just getting those last couple in so we can see that the red alliance has a full park and a partial park as well so with that and all the things that have happened in this match we see 85 and 5 so if we look at the score of this match it was ended up being 319 from the red alliance so we can see that they had 21 classified and autonomous and then they had 64 classified and six. So overall they hit a lot in this match. And if we go to the uh, breakdown, 
Yeah, we can see they hit 319 points. Uh, 15 of those were penalties, so they hit a 304 total. But still, we see that 21 classified artifacts and 10 pattern points, so the auto was 63. And then they had 64 classified artifacts and 6 overflow, so totaling to 91 artifacts in this match. And then 12 pattern points. So we could see that with this adaptability from these teams uh, and how they're able to just know on the fly to be able to go and change things and see the when they're going to get penalized or not and being able to change on the fly is something that's really uh, something that teams are going to be able to have to watch out for and be aware of because being able to do that is going to be something that is needed. So overall, we can see that coordinating autos, uh, making sure you guys know when you're going to be penalized and when you're not, and being aware of the other robots on the field, and then just making sure that they're just cycling as fast as possible and hitting all those shots and clearing the ramp is something that is really helping win these matches, and these fast, precise robots are something that is really driving what these high scores are. So let us know down in the comments if you guys think that this record will be broken again and we'll see 100 artifacts scored in a match and win. But until then, uh, like and subscribe to stay up to date on all fun robotics related content. And this has been Anthony on Finalysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Take on the decode season with Animark. FTC teams can discover great components such as Animark's 3 inch mechanum wheels, programmable servos, sensors that detect distance, color, orientation, and many more solutions for your team. Find this and more at Animark.com and count on Animark for the reliable service that teams expect. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at Kettering.edu first.